from Little John Coliseum. It's the ACC on ESPN. Florida State visiting number 18 Clemson. It's the second meeting of the season between these two teams. Right now, Joe Lenardi projects nine teams from the ACC to get into the NCAA tournament. Syracuse and Notre Dame both on the wrong side of the bubble looking to play their way in. The ACC tournament, though, begins in less than one week. With Jason Capel, I'm in a shrop. And Jason, the top four, they all get double buys, don't have to play until the quarters. The top nine all get that first round buy. Florida State looking to get a first round buy. Clemson in the running for a double buy. The final week of the ACC regular season, still so much to play for. The Clemson Tigers have an opportunity with two games to play to move into that first bracket where you get a double buy. You're talking about attrition there. And the Florida State Seminoles have an opportunity to get a quadrant one win on the road at Clemson. Now Florida State, even though they are in Joe Lenardi's field, they still have a little bit of work to do. Clemson tonight going for its 11th ACC win of the season. That would be a new school record. We're back with the opening tip. Florida State and Clemson dance for the second time this season. Second time in two weeks, you need sunglasses indoors. Florida State and Clemson getting ready for tip. A change to the Seminoles starting lineup. No C.J. Walker. He has knee tendinitis. He's expected to play but will not start. So Trent Forrest, who's played well of late, gets his second career start for the Seminoles. Florida State also looking to get Terrence Mann and Brian Angola going. Those two have struggled of late. For Clemson, Marquise Reed had 23 against Florida State just two weeks ago. Elijah Thomas averaging a double-double over his last five games. Staying out of foul trouble will be the key for him. Jimmy Lucky, Kip Kissinger, Raymond Steins Jr., the refs. And Florida State will control the opening tip. Working right to left. Clemson Tigers starting out in the solid man-to-man. -man. Kofor misfires. In Florida State's loss Sunday against NC State, the Knowles did not hit a single shot from outside the paint. Gabe DeVoe lost it, but able to draw the foul. You're guarding Shelton Mitchell. He's a left-handed player. You have to understand that he can drive right. You can't allow middle penetration. That pushed your team in rotation. And we've seen of late, Florida State has given up a lot of three-point shots because of that. Shelton Mitchell misfires. Offensive rebound, Elijah Thomas. Opponent shooting 40% from three against the Knowles in ACC play. Thomas lost it, able to regain. Still plenty of time to shoot. Thomas trying to get it over the seven foot four Kumaji. And that's what Chris Kumaji does. He doesn't have to block the shots, but at seven four, he makes you think about where he is on the floor. Great job coming from the help side. Kumaji, and he traveled. love the patience by Florida State there. The ball moved from one side of the floor to the other. Great spacing. Kamaji has to take his time and power that ball to the hoop. Shooter spread around. It's one-on-one -on -one in the post. Too big. He has to convert. Shelton Mitchell returned Saturday after missing a couple of games with a concussion. He suffered the injury against Florida State. Gabe DeVoe short on the three. He's picked up his game since the injury to Dante Grantham, Clemson's best player. And since Grantham went out, it's been simple for Clemson. When DeVoe plays well, the Tigers win. And DeVoe's last contest, 25 points, 4 for 7 from 3. He snapped out of a slump. He was 2 for 14 from distance his last two contests. And partner, you're exactly right. When he plays well, the Clemson Tigers are a tough ball club. 
Here comes Mitchell. Neither team has scored. Almost two and a half minutes in. Elijah Thomas. That seven foot four Chris Kumachi bothered him. Uh, but we get a foul down low as Thomas hit the deck. With Thomas going one on four inside. The Seminoles really packing in the lane. Thomas has to keep his head up. He can't try to force a shot over one of the best shot blockers in college basketball. He keeps his head up, keeps his feet pivoted. He can kick it out for open shooters. Kumaji, the tallest player in Florida State history at 7-4. Amir Sims trapped, gets rid of it. DeVoe dumps it off. Thomas drops it in for two. Well, that was kind of a double assist there. Gabe DeVoe with one. And then Kamaji hitting the deck, cleared the lane for Elijah Thomas to get an easy two. Brian Angola in and out. He's been in a shooting slump. Sims catching release. Yes. Amir Sims, the freshman, his playing time is increased with Dante Grantham out. That's his 10th made three of the year. Loves to set up in that corner. Hands ready, feet set. Shot ready on the catch. Kofer down the lane through traffic and contact. And we get a foul on Clemson. And that is one on Elijah Thomas. Brad Brownell told me today Thomas has to give Clemson 25 to 28 minutes. He can't commit early fouls and he can't commit silly fouls and that right there just unable to get out of the way you got to give florida state a lot of credit they've struggled shooting the ball from three early in this contest they're turning down the outside shots getting a piece of the paint putting pressure on the rim attacking phil kofer at the free throw line as you take a look at brad brownell who's clemson tigers poised to get back to the ncaa tournament after a six-year absence and he's talking to Elijah Thomas about what we were talking about. Well, he has to stay out of foul trouble. He has to be smart, be in the correct position. And Coach Ronell obviously there telling Thomas, inside, recognize there are four jerseys around you. You kick it out, the Tigers will get open shots. Forrest, a terrific defender. He was all over Mitchell. Shelton Mitchell, the three, batted out of bounds. Last touch, Florida State. It stays with Clemson. Mark Donnell. Grad transfer from Michigan. Trapped in the corner. Skips it to Marquise Reed. DeVoe. Back out to Reed. Shot fake. And the three good, Marquise Reed at 16 a game, Clemson's leading scorer. <laughs> nice possession there, DeVoe with the fancy pass. And Marquise Reed has shot a hot, hot basketball, able to knock it down from distance. Kofer unable to connect, here comes Reed. That one hits the back iron from Sims. Florida State, when they're able to get stops, secure rebounds, they have to push tempo, try to get easy points in transition before the Clemson defense can get back and get set. Seminole still without a field goal and now a turnover. Donnell. Angola comes up with the rebound and here's Forrest. Forrest, spin cycle, tornadoes into the paint. And Ike Obiagu with just his second field goal in his last 13 games. And it was hand delivered. The plate was set. Silverware on the side. All the big fella had to do was catch, go up, and sit on it. Monster dunk. Reed from 18. And there is Obiago with the rebound. He has six blocks against NC State on Sunday. Terrence Mann. 
Maneuvers his way into the paint. Over Sims, kicks to the corner. It's Kofer. And a three for Florida State after going 0 for 15 from downtown on Sunday. And that's a welcome sign right there. Bill Kofer, one of the most improved players, finally healthy. And he's expanded his game to be able to knock down that three-point shot with consistency. We get a foul on the floor. Florida State has pulled to within one. A couple of big guys knocking it down from the outside. You had Reed and then you had Kofer. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sam Adams. Fill your glass and pedigree. Feed the good. Florida State gave Clemson some heartache on Valentine's Day. The Seminoles trailed by 18 in the second half, tied the game. They went into overtime, and the Seminoles took their first lead with 105 to go in OT, coming away with an 81-79 win. Brad Brownell told me today the problem for Clemson was turnovers. He thought they played well offensively. 21 turnovers, though, led to 29 Florida State points. Well, you can't allow Florida State to turn you over and then get those easy baskets in transition. Trent Forrest, a huge catalyst down the stretch, and that was the game for the Clemson Tigers that Shelton Mitchell at the point guard position got hurt, got the concussion, and in my opinion, that changed the complexion of that ball game. Fiondu, Kevin Gelly. He's been taking the ball to the basket of late and when not scoring, getting to the free throw line. A 7-0 run for Florida State. C.J. Walker battling that knee tendonitis in for the Knowles. He did not start today, first time this season. And we get a foul as David Scarra going hard to the basket and... Now Leonard Hamilton going with the full line change here. And Coach Hamilton talked about this ball club has to win by committee. He's going to play a lot of guys early in this contest, keeping fresh bodies on the floor. But you look at this lineup, the Seminoles have a nice job by Kevin Gelly on the drive. But keep an eye on 23, MJ Walker, a guy that can get hot in a hurry. And you need those type of performances, especially on the road. Reed whips it inside. Scar up, blocked by Obiagu. And he'll stay with Clemson, 10 to shoot. You're playing Florida State. If you're trying to score inside, you better have a hard hat and take it strong. Big guys up there ready for the rejection. Scar a transfer from Valparaiso. DeVoe off balance. And the tip in by Donnell. Walker. A bounce to DeVoe. Senior out of Shelby, North Carolina. Decorated high school player there. Thought about the three. Instead, he'll drive to the basket. Unable to finish. And it hit DeVoe while he was out of bounds. Florida State basketball. That was an opportunity there. I thought gave DeVoe wide open top of the key. As we said, coming into this game, he's been shooting a hot basketball. When, when you attack, you better take it in there with authority against the front line of Florida State. Young man, keep your head on the swivel when the ball's coming back at you. Cabin Gelly missing from three. Here comes Reed. And the jumper is good. That's Malik William. MJ Walker, McDonald's All-American, a five-star freshman, and he travels. Clemson with a three-point lead at the 11.59 mark of the first half.
January 20th, Clemson's best player, Dante Grantham, tore his ACL against Notre Dame. Grantham done for the season, but his roommate, Gabe DeVoe, a fellow senior, really upped his game. And if you look at Clemson, nine games since the Grantham injury, they're five and four. In the five wins, DeVoe has been extraordinary. In the four losses, not so much. As DeVoe goes, so goes Clemson now. And he stepped up, and that's what you expect from your seniors. All hands on deck, but your seniors, your upperclassmen have to lead the way. And Gabe DeVoe has been a natural-born scorer since high school. He stepped up and done the job. That does not have a field goal so far in the first half, but two assists on the game, a couple of rebounds. They need his leadership here tonight at home. And we get a bump on the baseline against Clemson. First on Scarra. P.J. Savoy, that's what he's in the game to do, and we're tied at 12. Great action there, roll and replace, and P.J. Savoy, he's in his range when he steps into the gym. Number 32 from three-point range on the season. Donnell using the shot fake. Five to shoot. Scara, the turnaround swatted by Obiagu, and a shot clock violation. The young big fella doing his duty inside. You talked about it last contest. Six block shots. You have to give him a shot fake, head and shoulder, something. If you go straight up, too big, great timing. Meets the shot at his peak, keeps it in play. What a shot clock by violation. Great job defensively by the Seminoles. A seven footer from Nigeria. Offense a work in progress. Defensively, you're seeing what he can do. And we get a foul against Clemson and Cabin Gelly, who's been to the free throw line 18 times in his last two games, will head back to the stripe. And conversely, Cabin Gelly is a guy offensively that can put points on the board. Great patience. You saw the footwork. Seven points per game. Has a high of 13 against Pitt. The front court future of the Seminoles is in good hands with these two young men. Saturday's showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Number six, Kansas going to gallagher Iba to take on Oklahoma State. And then we get Louisville and NC State. The Wolfpack had the big win against Florida State on Sunday and Kevin Keats in his first season has done a remarkable job if NC State wins out they are guaranteed of a double buy in the top four seed with well, Tony Bennett at UVA is going to be coach of the year and rightfully so but Kevin Keats has completely turned that program around in a short time the Wolfpack they play hard they pressure you defensively and when they're making shots from distance that is a dangerous team headed into ACC tournament play Florida State saw that firsthand. Knowles can take the lead here. Gavin Gelly draws the contact. No whistle, but the basket good. This young man can score inside. But Florida State, they're getting their points because of their defense. And that's the staple of Leonard Hamilton teams. Holding the Tigers right now 28% from the field. And their defense gets their offense going creating those easy opportunities inside. They get a foul on C.J. Walker, his second. And for Leonard Hamilton, Jason, the problem this year has been defense. Florida State averages 81 points per game in conference, but they're also giving up 81 a game. And giving up easy opportunities, second chance, if you've seen already in this contest with six offensive rebounds by the Clemson Tigers, but allowing three-point shots. You get that when you don't keep the ball handler in front of you and your defense stays in rotation. This team has to defend in order to put the ball in the hole offensively. Runner for DeVoe, no good. He's 0 for 4. Angola, that's through the legs of Forrest, the turnover. 
And Brian Angola, no one stopped the ball. If no one stops the basketball, you have to continue to attack until the defense rotates over, and then you make the correct basketball play. Foul on Chris Kumaji. Off the inbounds, a turnover. Mann gets it back from Forrest. Mann to the basket. The tip in is good by Kofer. And that's when Florida State is at their best. They turn you over the live ball variety. It allows the Seminoles to get in transition, 7-0 run, and it starts with the defense of Florida State. Mitchell kicks it over to Sims. Rebound to Angola. Angola was open. Kofer. Knocks it down from the outside. One of the most improved players in the ACC. He spent a lot of time in the offseason working on his jump shot with assistant coach Stan Jones. And for a guy who really had trouble staying healthy and wasn't much of a scorer, he has blossomed in his final season in Tallahassee. Well, you wait for your moment. You work for it. It's all about improving. And what a better time than your senior season. Carolina and Duke on Saturday. Clemson fans will be rooting for Duke because if the Blue Devils win and the Tigers win out, Clemson guaranteed a first round bye and a second round bye in the ACC tournament. Yeah, those are pretty good resumes for both those programs. You played at one of them. And there's nothing like it. As a player, you know the world is watching. And for a Tar Heel visiting Cameron Indoor Stadium, <laughs> the bus pulls up, the fans in Krzyzewskiville are waiting for you. Personally, I got booed the second I stepped onto the floor. The chance, but I wouldn't have worn it any other way. I was a Cameron crazy for four years, cheering on number five from Duke. I wanted to be that villain stepping in there. And when you walk out with a win, there's nothing, there's no feeling like it. It's going to be a great contest senior night. For Grayson Allen, both teams coming off a loss. Get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a great game. Did those fans have information on you that you didn't even know existed? No, they just chanted Jeff. Jeff was better <laughs> the entire time, from stretching to warm-ups. Was was Jeff ready? Was Jeff supplying information? Perhaps he wasn't, but. I only one in Cameron Indoor Stadium one time. Okay. And my brother happened to be in attendance. And one of the special games in my career, we won. I played pretty well. It's a big time win. And he was the first person to greet me in the locker room, embracing me. They oh, let him in. They let him in. Oh, we won. He was a part of the celebration. He was neutral then. He was an assistant coach at Old Dominion. But he didn't get a ticket from me. He definitely got his tickets from the Duke Blue Devils. Right. Clemson, a couple of baskets to end a 10-0 Florida State run. Chris Kumaji kicks it out. Kofer's got 10. Angola will fire from three, and he snaps a streak of 21 consecutive missed threes. And if that ignites Brian Angola, boy, the outlook for Florida State changes down the stretch. One for 21 from distance coming to this contest. And there's something about shooters against a short shot clock that their percentages skyrocket. But Brian Angola, he's been the weapon from three-point range for the Seminoles all season. He's gone into a slump offensively. They have gone along with him. And that's a welcome sign for Leonard Hamilton to see his best shooter Step up and knock one down from distance. Kamaji just picked up his second foul. Angola was shooting better than 40% from three before 
going into hibernation from downtown. He told me a couple of weeks ago if he could just score some easy baskets, he felt that could get him going. And in the second half against NC State, you saw him get fouled, take the ball to the basket, get some buckets in transition. And you know, we wondered aloud on Sunday, I did the game with Corey Alexander, if maybe Brian Angola was starting to emerge. That's certainly a great sign for Florida State. The shooters have to see the ball go through the basket. How about Obiagu? Great drive, the crossover from the big fella Thomas. But Obiagu... His second block of the game, he has great timing, beat on the play, but didn't give up. Now Obiagu working against Elijah Thomas, and go figure, the guy who had five field goals in ACC play all season, two tonight. And you reward your big guy. If you want the big fellas to protect the rim and rebound the basketball, you have to feed them inside. And there you can see Sims. Aware of Obiagu's presence, kicks it out, but Mitchell able to can the three. Clemson unable to score in the paint. The size and shot blocking ability of Florida State has really taken him out of the game. Shelton Mitchell, he played 32 minutes his first game back. Good sign to see him healthy and contributing for the Tigers. I'll tell you what, Obiagu, his build is not of a freshman. That's and a he grown looks like man. That is a grown man. And he does his job. He understands his job is to set screens, rebound the basketball, protect the rim. And anytime he can put points on the board for you, those are bonus opportunities. You've seen his minutes continue to increase because he gives you so much on the defensive end. And we get a whistle. A foul is on Obiagu, away from the ball, his first. A little too aggressive, trying to get inside position. When you score four points in the first half, you're not accustomed to touching the basketball. You're going to work a little harder to do your work early inside. You can't be physical of that nature right in front of the official standing on the baseline. Two field goals in the first half after one in the previous 12 games. Donnell from the outside hits the three. It's a two-point game. Man puts it on the floor. The basket and the foul on Donnell. Excellent job by Terrence Mann. You see the footwork on the wing. The jab step rotated the defense. Allowed him to drive to that baseline. Great body control to move around the defender. When guys are attacking, you know you're going to get hit. You love it when they have their chin up. That forces your eyes to focus on the rim through the contact. And man completes the three-point play. Man is Florida State's leading scorer, but like Angola, has not been that productive of late. You look at the last seven games compared to the first 20 points per game down almost 10 a game they need to get those two going Angola and Mann for the stretch run Reed blocked again by Obiagu Donnell here this comes Florida State defensively this is as good as they've looked in a while this defense is swarming contesting every shot doing the job in the ball screen setting and this is Florida State basketball defensively protecting the rim helping one another being connected and contesting every shot Florida State ahead by five ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the DQ Chicken Strip Basket with 100% all-white meat chicken, only at your DQ. And Old Spice, je ne parle même pas français, ooh la la. For Ike Obiagu, the freshman from Nigeria, four blocks in the first half tonight. He had six blocks in the second half on Sunday against NC State. And he's been everywhere. Great footwork, four points, easy baskets inside. But you see, not just blocking shots on his player, 
doing the job in rotation, being in a stance, moving around, covering outside of his area. And since he's come in the game, he has changed the tempo, the ferocity of the Seminole defense, doing an excellent job, the freshman big. He's been the main reason Florida State has been so much better on defense tonight. Clemson just 9 of 27 from the field. Still a five-point game. Here's Trent Forrest. He was big two weeks ago against Clemson. 16 points. Eight of them in the final five minutes plus. Colfer. Too strong. Rebound Elijah Thomas. DeVoe contested three. And he is fouled by P.J. Savoy. So three shots coming for Gabe DeVoe. That's a cardinal sin. You cannot foul a three-point shooter. Gabe DeVoe, yes, he's shot a hot, hot basketball coming into this game. But he has not made a field goal in this first half. Contest with the high hand, be there on the catch. But these shots right here at least can get a guy who struggled so far in this first half, seeing it go through the hoop, can get him going. Well, we have an NBA Friday doubleheader for you at 8 Eastern. DeMar DeRozan and the Raptors in the nation's capital to take on the Wizards. Then Carl Anthony Towns and the T-Wolves taking on slam dunk champ Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz. Utah's won 12 out of 14. And Donovan Mitchell, I'm calling it right now, Spider has to be rookie of the year. What Ben Simmons is doing is incredible, but Donovan Mitchell's the best player on a team that's going to make the playoffs and make some noise. He's having a great rookie season, and quite frankly, I don't think anybody saw him being this successful this early. No. MJ Walker, there's Thomas again to clean up. Now, Ben Simmons had the red shirt here too, right? Absolutely. He's a year older. But Donovan Mitchell was contemplating whether to turn pro or not. I'd say he made the right decision. Florida State, I think, pleading for a goaltend. Absolutely. Gabe DeVoe, when he went up to block that shot, he grabbed the net and pulled up on the rim. MJ Walker attacking in transition. DeVoe coming help side. As, as clear as day, he didn't touch the basketball, but that left hand allowed him to pull up on the rim. That should be two points with an opportunity for a third at the foul line. Instead, it's going to be two shots for Walker. Leonard Hamilton not happy with the call, and rightfully so. Foul is on David Scara, his second. And MJ Walker to the free throw line, the freshman, a McDonald's All-American, and a big-time football recruit, too. In fact, Dabo Sweeney offered him a scholarship to play football at Clemson. Look at that young man's offers in football. Number one shooting guard in the country, a top eight player, McDonald's All-American. But Clemson, Michigan, I'm talking the heavyweights of college football. Florida, this Miami. Man of scholarship. You've seen some pretty good two sports stars at Florida State. DeVoe from the outside. And it's no coincidence, it's after the three free throws that gave DeVoe getting fouled on that three-point shot. You never want to give a shooter confidence seeing the ball go through the hoop. And we were singing Florida State's praises a minute ago, and it's a one-point game. Here comes DeVoe on the drive. Can't finish, gets it back. Close ball game. You have a three-on-one break. You have to come away with points. Thomas over Obiagu and Clemson with the lead. Timeout. By Florida State with 136 to go in this opening half. 
Seminoles without a field goal in almost three minutes, and Clemson has retaken the lead. In attendance tonight, we were just talking about MJ Walker. Dabo offered Walker a football scholarship. Walker instead opting to play basketball. And uh, right now in the ACC, there is no better and no more anticipated yearly matchup on the gridiron than Clemson, Florida State. We have Duke UNC this weekend. When it comes to the fall, that's Clemson, Florida State. And Clemson has been the breadwinner in the ACC, competing for national championships, and Dabo Sweeney, one of the very best coaches in all of football, capturing that national championship a season ago. Reed. Able to draw the foul. He'll shoot two. One of the best free throw shooters in the conference. Two on Terrence Mann. Reed had 23 points against Florida State two weeks ago. Oh, and if you haven't heard, speaking of that... Duke Carolina rivalry. UNC won round one at the Dean Dome, round two at Cameron Indoor. Senior night for Grayson Allen. He's going to be amped. The entire Cameron Indoor Stadium is going to be amped. I can promise you that. A couple of factors. They're coming off a loss at Virginia Tech. Grayson Allen, senior night. And oh, yeah, you're playing your heated rival on the final regular season game in ACC play. It's gonna be high level basketball for the world to watch. Carolina lost last night, but they had been playing extremely well and won six in a row prior to the Miami defeat. Clemson, despite shooting 11 of 30 in this first half with a three point lead, We get a foul on Elijah Thomas, and that is two on Thomas. And that's the thing that Coach Brad Barnell was trying to ensure did not happen. Elijah Thomas setting that screen, didn't come to a stop, tried to roll up the defender. That's an easy blocking call. Kofer in the corner, hits the three, 13 for Phil Kofer who had 17 against Clemson two weeks ago. All of those came in the second half. Three three-point shots, and I think he likes that corner over there. Hides behind the defense, shot ready. Florida State five for 10 in the first half from distance, and that has been the difference in this ballgame. 0 for 15 on Sunday. Clemson with the shot clock winding down, the game clock winding down, able to hit from the outside. And the Tigers on that Shelton Mitchell three will take a three-point lead into the locker room. Welcome back, Shelton Mitchell. Clock running down, the fancy footwork, crossover into a jump shot. The Clemson Tigers have gotten into an offensive flow the last five minutes of this contest. Three-point lead headed in the half. Florida State 35-32, getting ready for the start of the second half. If the ACC tournament were to begin today, Clemson would be the five seed. The Tigers at 10 and six in conference. If they win out, you would think they've got a great shot to be a top four seed and get one of those double buys. And really Clemson, they're gonna be big Duke fans this weekend because if the Blue Devils beat North Carolina and the Tigers take care of business in their last two games, Clemson will have a top four seed. Well, it's quite simple for Clemson. They control their destiny. You have to take care of your home floor. And then Saturday, going on the road to Syracuse, two wins, you put yourself in good position for not only seeding in the ACC tournament, but moving up the ladder as well in the NCAA tournament. Florida State, a lot at stake as well. You're talking about attrition. The difference in playing four games 
or three games throughout a tournament. And that's a big deal. I've been on both sides. When you have the mindset. Four versus five, three, actually. Four versus case. five. Now, Duke did it last year. They won four games. But you don't want to go into a tournament with the mindset that you have four games back to back to back to cut down the nets. You're trying to put yourself in position where you're playing your best basketball and you play the least amount of games possible with an opportunity to win the tournament, but also, more importantly, improve your seating as you head into the NCAA tournament. As of right now, Joe Lenardi projecting Florida State as a nine seed. This is a seminal team that has four wins against ranked opponents this season. They beat Florida, they beat North Carolina, they got a win against Miami and Clemson, but this would be another, as they like to say, quadrant one win, and to do it on the road, this would be big time for Florida State. You get the win tonight, I think it takes some of the pressure off. Even if you have a bad showing in Brooklyn, you're probably in. Well, you talk about having 20 wins, you're above 500 in the ACC, which is the best league top to bottom in all of the country, and you're winning on the road against a top 25 team. You have an opportunity in this final 20 minutes to really place yourself in good position headed into postseason play. Meanwhile, for Clemson, Joe Lenardi projects the Tigers as a five seed. With a win tonight, Clemson would set a school record with 11 ACC wins, and I know 11 ACC wins hasn't been done, and there's 18 games now. There used to be 14 games, and then there were 16 games. But Brad Brownell says, given what's happened this year and the adversity his team has had to face, especially losing Dante Grantham, who was having such a great senior season, there's a lot of stock and there's a lot of celebrating to do if Clemson can get to 11 wins and set a school record. Brad Brownell said, he told me today it'd be a fantastic accomplishment. And Brad Barnell should get a lot of credit for that. He's reshaped this team. You're talking about Dante Grantham out. They were without their point guard for three games. And they've had to adjust on the fly. And he's done an excellent job this season. Deserves a lot of credit. Gabe DeVoe missing the three to begin the second half. Kofer, he loves that corner. His fourth three, he's got 16 to lead all scores. The right corner, Phil Kofer sets up shop. His feet are set, and he's shot ready, calling for the basketball. If you're Clemson, you have to control the ball at the point of attack. Elijah Thomas doing his work early. If you're Chris Kamaji, you have to take away that right shoulder of the left-handed Thomas inside. 6.6 .6 rebounds for Thomas, who's averaging a double-double over his last five. Forrest looking for help, traveled. Seminole 6 of 11 from 3 after going 0 for 15 on Sunday. And in that loss to NC State, the Seminoles did not make a single field goal outside of the paint. DeVoe hits. I'm sure Brian Barnell is saying, you better have made that shot. Gabe DeVoe taking a long three-point shot, his second of the half already. Over 7-4, Chris Kamaji. Angola turns it over. DeVoe up ahead. Thomas blocked by Kumaji. Angola around Reed. Drops it off to Mann. Extra pass. Forrest. And a Trent Forrest will shoot two. Florida State starting this half with two turnovers, trying to attack the baseline, running out of real estate. But their defense continues to do the job. Chris Kamaji erasing that shot, allowing the Seminoles to get in transition. And these, you better have your hard hat, your shoes laced up tight, and attack the rim with authority when you're going against the front line of Florida State. Nothing Seven. easy inside. They've been getting devoured tonight. Six blocks already for Florida State. Four of those by Ike Obiagu.
Forrest gets the free throws. Known as an elite defender, he has become a scoring threat of late. Double figures in three straight games. Scored a career-high 16 against Clemson two weeks ago. Matched that on Sunday against NC State. Reed from the outside. And the rebound by Kumaji. Forrest puts it on the floor. He's blocked by Sims. Man. And Sims able to come up. Mitchell, Reed from the baseline. And that's the difference having a point guard for Clemson makes. Shelton Mitchell is a guy that understands he's going to drive the basketball until the defense forces him to stop. A great unselfish play. And Marquise Reed, that's a tough shot there on the baseline. The Clemson Tigers getting the job done with a five-point lead. It starts with defense, the rejection. Ignites the break. Presented by Taco Bell, the ACC tournament begins Tuesday in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. What do you make of the Big Ten bringing its tournament to the Garden beginning today? Well, everyone wants to come to the Mecca, and you can't blame them for that. But the Big Ten, I think it's going to be a competitive tournament. But starting earlier than everyone else. That well, that was to get into the Garden. Well, well, absolutely. But it's also going to give those teams an opportunity to be rested, lick their wounds, and sit at home while everyone else is still competing and beating each other up to be the fresher teams going into NCAA tournament play. That'll be something to watch. An offensive foul on Kofer. And right now, Uncle Mo on the side of Clemson. Florida State has had a tendency to come out of the locker room at halftime and become stagnant. You've seen turnovers throughout the first four minutes so far. On the road against a top 25 team, you cannot turn the basketball over. You have to have cohesion on the offensive end. Right now, Florida State needs to dig in on the defensive end of the floor. Mitchell to Thomas. Over to Sims. The follow is not there. A couple of bunnies missed. And Sims heard the footsteps of 7-4 Chris Kamaji. Again, he doesn't have to block the shot, but you have to be aware of where he is. Can cover so much ground in a short period of time and that stop once again allows the Seminoles to push the break before the defense is set and though they've struggled offensively have a chance now to step to the line and see the ball go through the hoop and Elijah Thomas Jason just picked up his third personal foul Trent Forrest to the free throw line the nephew uh, former Seminole football great Amp Lee, a standout running back at Florida State. And for Brad Brownell, this is a big loss right now. Thomas was somebody that he told me he needed it tonight. He said he has to give us 25 to 28 minutes and has to stay out of foul trouble, which has been the problem throughout his career. Well, this is a huge deal. Thomas is the only guy that the Clemson Tigers can throw the ball inside to and expect to come away with points. He rebounds at a high clip, eight double-doubles, and you're playing against this towering front line. With him on the bench, it puts more pressure on the guards of the Clemson Tigers. Marquise Reed will bring it up. One time Northeast Conference Rookie of the Year at Robert Morris. DeVoe to an open Sims. Three is not there, Forrest to the rebound. Forrest pushing. Man from the corner. Obiagu battling for the rebound. It comes to Kofer. Second try for Man. And this time it's DeVoe skying for the carom. Bill Kofer has to score the basketball. He did the hard work, got the rebound. Terrence Mann is not a good outside three point shooter. You're a big fella, two feet in the lane, a big time athlete. Go up high and finish. Obiagu got a piece of that one too. That is his fifth block. 
alternating possession when the ball gets stuck. Florida State basketball Seminoles down by three. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dr. Show's Custom Fit Orthotics and Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. Anish Rob, Jason Capel with you. News and notes from around the ACC, the return. Bonzi Colson came back tonight, ACC preseason player of the year. 12 points, 9 rebounds. Notre Dame beats Pitt. UNC losing on senior night by a Jaquan Newton buzzer beater and Virginia. The Cavaliers have put together one of the best regular seasons in the history of this conference. And they have, and it's been because of their defense, which is the best in all of college basketball. Also the emergence, Kyle Guy scoring the basketball, Jerome who will take and make big shots, and Devin Hall, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated players in the ACC. This is a dangerous team headed into March. And DeAndre Hunter has been a big factor off the bench. He might be the sixth man of the year in the ACC. Angola's hit a couple of threes tonight. He came in one for his last 21 from three, and that is a huge sign for Florida State. And in Anish, you see they're getting it by pushing tempo early. And Brian Angola, he plays harder when he sees that ball go through the net. Knocks down that three, picks up 94 feet. The head of the snake right now on the defensive end. Mitchell, no good. Obiagu rips down the rebound. Seminoles looking to retake the lead here. Angola feeling it! And these shooters only need to see it go through the hoop one time. When it rains, it pours. And he's making it rain right now in the second half. Consecutive three-point shots. And that one, not a lot of space, not a lot of time. But he knocks it down. Donnell at the other end of the grad transfer from Michigan. And we're tied at 45. This contest got off to a slow start. Team struggling to score. But it's a big hoop right now. They're finding their way. Both teams shooting a hot basketball from distance. Five to shoot. Angola kicks to the corner. Forrest. Three is not there. We get a foul underneath. And it's going to be on Obiagu. Brian Angola, one for 21 from three coming to this contest. You sprint in transition, the balls kick the head, knock it down. And then off the bounce, Forrest, an unselfish play. Angola now in a nice rhythm. You see him going to the bench with a smile on his face. He has found his shot. He has the Seminoles locked into a tie in this ball game. Florida State came into this game shooting 29% from three in its last seven. And when you go 0 for 15 on Sunday, that doesn't help the average. But they were a really good shooting team coming into conference play at the beginning of conference play. They've sort of taken a nosedive. Angola's slump had a lot to do with it. If that three-point shot comes back, if Angola can come back, if Mann can play better, if they found something in Obiagu as a guy who can give you meaningful minutes and defensive energy, boy, the outlook changes for Florida State, doesn't it? Well, it's a team that has shown it can score the basketball this season. Terrence Mann is excellent off the bounce. He's a slasher, a scorer, attacking the paint. But Brian Angola has been the guy to lead the offense throughout this season. He can take big shots and knock them down. Doesn't need a lot of space or time. They need his production as an upperclassman, especially here on the road. Reed misses. Obiagu to the bench with three fouls now. Watch Kofer, he's in that corner. Four threes tonight, most of his damage from that right corner. Instead, it's man denied at the rim by Sims. Reed, stutter step, Scara travel. Thank you for the time. 
C.J. Walker back in for Florida State. He did not start today with knee tendonitis, but has played off the bench. Mann kicks it out to Kofer. Shot clock winding down. Mann over Sims. And we get a foul underneath on Kevin Gilly. A lost possession for Florida State. The ball was stagnant, stuck on one side of the floor. No ball or body movement. And you settle for a contested shot against a short shot clock. And Leonard Hamilton looks down his bench, sees a guy that put in consecutive three-point shots, immediately sends Brian Angola back into this game. And Terrence Mann to the bench. He's just one of eight three points as we get a foul. Now they'll say it's deflected out. A man is somebody Florida State has to get to being productive again. Five points or less in three of his last five games. And again, just one of eight three points tonight. He's that Swiss Army knife. Does a bit of everything. He can score. A great facilitator. And he can rebound the ball as well. But you can't have him over dribbling the basketball, taking contested three-point shots. He's a 25% three-point shooter. He needs to be a slasher, getting out in transition, getting something going to the hoop. Walker inside, Kevin Kelly, and a foul on the floor against Clemson. Been a good one at Little John, all tied at 45. The Great Tobacco Road rivalry renews this Saturday in our Wendy's Wooden Watch. Luke May and Marvin Bagley, they will both be first team all ACC selections. And Bagley has had one of the great freshman seasons in the history of this conference. Luke May, it started last March, and he's had a breakout season for the Heels. Well, you can say the two leading candidates for ACC player of the year as well. So who do you give it to? I think a lot is going to be determined by who wins that game on Saturday. But Luke May, what a great story. When you talk about a student athlete, a guy who's worked for every inch. He made the shot last season in the NCAA tournament against Kentucky. Worked his tail off this summer. A lot was on his shoulders to step up and be really the only returning front court player. He's been ready for the challenge. And saying he's been productive is not doing it justice. He has been dominant, scoring the ball, rebounding, and doing it from everywhere when the heels have needed it most. Phil Kofer to the free throw line. The foul was on Amir Sims, his third. Kofer's got a game high 16 tonight. Terrific bloodlines. His dad, Michael, was a Pro Bowl defensive lineman in the NFL. Mom, Reba. Played basketball in Tennessee. Phil told me earlier in the year that he and his brother, Michael Jr., would play mom and dad two-on-two two in the driveway growing up. Oh, that's big time right there. I would love to hear those stories. Who has bragging rights? Who won the last game? Because you know mom and dad have that competitive energy. They're not going to take it easy on their kids. That's what he said. He said a lot of hard fouls in the driveway. He said Believe a lot that. of hard fouls, and it took a while before he and his brother could start getting mom and dad. Well, a note to parents. Foul your kids in the driveway. It makes them better, makes them tougher. <laughs> Call the cops. Walker, Walker the steal. The reach around keeps it alive. And you see right there, their energy changes when Florida State can force a turnover. That's their identity. That's who they are. That's what gives them that spark. Grading things on the defensive end. Marquis Reed, two with a chance for three. CJ Walker picks up his third. Marquis Reed, he was the player that just got his pocket picked. Walker said a little something to him. 
Reed immediately, when he got the basketball, dropped that inside shoulder, attacked, able to put it in. Can't complete the three-point play. But we're going to see maybe a personal battle going on here now with great competitors on both ends. Reed has been a fan of hump day. 28 last Wednesday against Virginia Tech. 23 the previous Wednesday against Florida State. Well, he single-handedly kept the Tigers in that game against Virginia Tech. Eight three-point shots. He's a natural-born scorer, and now with Shelton Mitchell back in the lineup, he can go back to simply scoring the basketball with, without having to think about being that facilitator from the point guard position. Nice hustle there by Donnell. Clemson basketball. And Brad Brownell told me today that when Mitchell was out, Reed was miscast, as you said, as a point guard. And Mitchell's return makes offense easier for everybody else, according to head coach Brad Brownell. Well, it frees up he and Gabe DeVoe. Those two guys are natural-born scorers, something they've been doing their entire lives. If you try to change them to a point guard, you make them think that slows them down. It takes away from who they are as individual players. There's Clyde Trapp, the freshman. Donnell looking for help. Ten to shoot. DeVoe puts it on the floor. Kicks to the corner. Three by Trapp. Off the mark. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Members bounce by Trapp. Clemson on top. Three ball, corner pocket, <laughs> touched everything. A little bit of Front English. of the rim, top of the backboard. Found his rightful place at the bottom of the net. DeVoe in the passing lane. Clemson by five. Walker back the other way. And a foul. Tigers on a 7-0 run. And Gabe DeVoe blew a tire there in transition. You talk about a shooter's touch. Clyde Trapp, you're welcome. Touched everything and gave DeVoe shooting the passing lane. Had bad intentions to go up high for a jam. Lost his feet, still able to finish. But Florida State did not rest. Inbounded the ball quickly, pushed in transition. You have to make shots at the foul line when you're trying to mount a comeback and get a big win on the road. Amir Sims to the bench. He's got four fouls now. 52-49. Two weeks ago, these two went to overtime. Florida State rallied from 18 down in the second half. This one's been pretty close throughout. The ball hits the deck. There's Trap. Five to shoot. DeVoe through traffic and able to draw the foul. It's on Kevin Gilly. His second. Florida State, you played great defense for 28 seconds. Kept the ball in front of you, connected. And then you allow a straight line drive, putting pressure on your back line. Great job by Clyde Trapp getting his footprints in the paint. Freshman from Eastover, South Carolina, hits the first. Sports Center tonight after Rockets Clippers with Stan and Neil. We'll break down Anthony Davis's fantastic February 35 and 12. Plus, a look at how the Rockets and Warriors handled road tests. Houston looking for their 14th straight win. How about Trapp coming, coming off the bench, giving Clemson a bit of a lift here. Came in averaging just two points per game. 54-49, nine minutes to go in regulation. Forrest. Savoy, and we get a blocking foul on Donnell. Donnell shaking his head. That is three on Mark Donnell. A bang bang play here. Donnell a second late jumping out. He was kind of caught in no man's land in these. He didn't hedge on the ball screen. He wasn't there corralling. He knew he was late. He tried to jump out and stop the ball handler. 
The Little John faithful, unhappy with the call, but I believe it was the correct call. Forrest driving to the basket. Count it plus one. Trent Forrest with a body snatching crossover left to right, doing the job attacking downhill. Giving an assist to Obiaku, sealing the lane, allowing his teammate to turn the corner. A little window shopping off the glass for a possible three-point play. Donnell picked up his fourth, so Elijah Thomas, who has three fouls, checks back in. For Thomas, he has to play smart now. Can't pick up silly fouls. Brad Brownell says Thomas... Needs to stay on the floor, needs to stay out of foul trouble. Picked up two in the first half. Mitchell. Obiagu cancels him again. What a play. You attack, you think you have a clear lane. How about that? Off of Mitchell, so it's Florida State basketball. You're never safe. You think you have the step on Florida State. Their bigs cover so much ground. Obiagu, five blocks. That's now 11 in less than 30 minutes of action on the floor. I call that getting the job done. Savoy, no good. A rebound to Clemson. Tigers nursing a two-point lead. Trap, open three. Didn't use the top of the backboard on that one. Well, that's not the shot that Brad Barnell wants. Immediately, forcefully, telling the Tigers to get the ball to Shelton Mitchell, set up in their half-court set. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Mitchell, he'll fire. Obiago is flying at him. And here comes Florida State with another chance to tie. Elijah Thomas got away with pushing Trent Forrest in the back. That would have been a costly play there. That would have been number four on the big man for the Clemson Tigers. DeVoe driving, kicking. Mitchell. And we get a foul on Terrence Mann. 6.55 to go in regulation. It's a two-point game in Clemson. Tomorrow is the first day of March. The madness begins. Joe Lenardi projects nine ACC teams in the field. Couple on the bubble right now. Syracuse, one of them, but losing on the road to Boston College late in the second half. Notre Dame. Can they play themselves back in with Bonzi Colson now back in the lineup? Big 12 has 10 teams in the conference, eight projected to make the NCAA tournament. This is the time of year that everyone waits for. You watch the entire season. You see the teams beat up on one another in conference play. But this is the fun time of the year where it's about one shining moment, playing your best basketball individually have an opportunity to represent your university in the NCAA tournament with an opportunity to cut down the nets as national champions. Clemson is going to have a place in the field this year after missing it six years in a row. Last few years, they've been sweating it out late in the season, not this year. Brad Brownell and his staff have done a terrific job withstanding the injury. To Dante Grantham, Tigers come up with the loose ball. Possession arrow, though, to Florida State. Shot clock at four. You see Brad Barnell just rolling his eyes there. His team did the job defensively. Shelton Mitchell was the first to the floor. And you would love to see the defensive team You've done the job, done the hard work, the heavy lifting. Be rewarded with getting the basketball back, or at the very least, throw it up and let's decide it in the air 50 50. Four to shoot. 
Forrest down the lane. And he gets the roll, 56-54. And Anise, that's the reason why. Clemson did an excellent job defensively. As I said, they were first to the floor for a 50-50 play. You let Florida State off the hook by giving him giving them the basketball back. And Forrest makes a great individual play. Thomas on the inside, bumped by Obiagu. And Elijah Thomas to the free throw line. He's a 61% free throw shooter. Four now on Ike Obiagu. Thomas came to Clemson from Texas A&M from the Dallas area the first Texan to shine with Clemson a former top 50 prospect out of high school and he gets one out of two it's a three-point game six minutes to go in regulation wild layup by Forrest not there star of the rebound Outlet up ahead to Thomas! What a catch. Not only did the big man rim run, ready to catch the basketball, but the ball was tipped. Still able to corral it and finish in emphatic fashion. That's a big play for the Clemson Tigers. Kofer, now Forrest, 10 to shoot. Obiagu sets the screen for Angola. Kofer open for three. Kofer with 16, but has not scored since the 19 minute mark of the second half. Good Great pass. feed, and Thomas to the free throw line. Well, this is fast break one on one. If you're the first big, there's an imaginary line right down the center, rim to rim. You put your head down, you run. Shelton Mitchell, great job pitching the ball ahead, but great vision and concentration by Elijah Thomas with the catch and finish. I think Dabo's taking notes. Elijah Thomas, walk on, oh, question mark. Oh, tight end action, over the shoulder, across the middle. A goal line package. Hey. Throw it up to him. Go get it. This is a crucial possession for Florida State. Angola, the turnaround, gets it to drop. 11 for Brian Angola, the senior from the South American country of Colombia. That's where you need your upperclassmen to step up and say, give me the basketball. And goal of the drive, nice spin. And that's a clutch finish for the senior. The jumper by Reed, he's got 15. Clock in single digits. The lob for Kumaji. Clemson breaks it up. Forrest. Kofer oh, oh, with oh, emphasis. Phil oh, oh, oh. Kofer. Throw it down. Gabe DeVoe tried to come over and contest. But all he walked away with was being on Phil Kofer's poster. Big time jam. Reed against Walker. Reed, the fadeaway, hits. Seventeen for Reed. And Reed breaks. 
picks it up, knocks it out of bounds. Clemson by six. Phil Kofer sending some reverbs through Little John. The feed going up high. Little Statue of Liberty action. Throwing it down. The bitch likes it. Florida State trying to rally here down the stretch. Saturday marks the 45th time North Carolina and Duke will play with both in the AP Top 10. You know what the series is? 22-22. That's the way it should be, correct? You have two-story programs, legendary coaches. The players that have played in this game understand what this is all about. Two teams that play at a high level. And Saturday, what a contest that's going to be. Again, senior night for Grayson Allen, who's come full circle. He was the hero in 2015. And now he gets an opportunity to play against the Blue Devils arch rival on his senior day. With Jason Cable and East Shroff, you played at Carolina, your brother played at Duke. What were the dinner table conversations like when those games took place? Well, we're separated by five years, so it was quite simple. The family rooted for the Blue Devils for four years, took a break in the middle, and then rooted for the Tar Heels. So we got the best of both worlds as a family, and it was a beautiful thing. Florida State, you love to see the Seminoles execute out of the timeout, moving the basketball, and Phil Colfer needs to buy real estate in the right corner because he's done the job delivering throughout this entire game. And that's been amen corner for Kofer. DeVoe straight away. Unable to answer, but the offensive rebound by Scara. Clemson has been so good tonight on the glass. Mitchell, another chance. Thomas hits the deck. It's going to be a foul on Florida State. And the referee is getting in the middle to separate the two sides. And Elijah Thomas cannot involve himself in anything of that nature. Your team is winning. You're too valuable to the ball club. Nothing dirty happened. He hits the floor. Kamaji backs into him. And you don't need that right now. You're too valuable to this team. You got the call. The foul was called in your favor. And that's exactly what Coach Brad Burnell is saying to his young big man. Good job by Jamie Lucky and the officials getting in there, keeping things from escalating. Ten team fouls now on Florida State. So Clemson in the double bonus. A win tonight would give Clemson 11 ACC wins, something they've never done in school history, win 11 games in conference. And there's the foul right there, Kumaji. Got too much of Thomas. Well, Kamaji trying to box out, using his arms, which you can't do. So, yes, he did make contact above the shoulders. The officials are going to take a look at it. But what Thomas had issue with was Kamaji stepping over him. He was behind him. I don't even think Kamaji understood where he was on the floor. And, again, you can't involve yourself in this. It is winning time. And that's, just a, that's, that's just an old-fashioned Old West stare down. But you can't do that if you're Elijah Thomas. And you see Brad Barnell make his way down the sideline and pull his big man out of the fray. He's too important to this team. And mentally, he has to understand that late in the contest. Officials reviewing that last foul. I think it's going to stand as a common foul. Nothing excessive to warrant a flagrant and Elijah Thomas to the free throw line it is a two shot common foul Thomas 10 points 8 rebounds and this is what Thomas was upset about right there and I understand that you can't disrespect somebody by stepping over him. That was made famous when Allen Iverson stepped over Tyron Lue, the 76ers against the L.A. Lakers in the finals. But I don't think that was Chris Kamaji's intentions. And it's winning time for Clemson, an opportunity, as you said, partner, to get 11 wins in ACC play. You have to keep your head in winning time. 
Forrest so good down the stretch against Clemson two weeks ago. Now it's man. And a blocking foul. Elijah Thomas called for his fourth. Just the eighth team foul on Clemson. Right there is where the foul occurs. If Thomas moves his feet, stands his ground, shows his hands, man was out of control. He has a great opportunity to pick up the charge. Anytime as a big, you reach into the action, you're just giving the officials an open opportunity to place the foul on you. Man misses them both. And an over the back foul. And that is going to be on Elijah Thomas. They'll call the foul on Thomas. That is five on Thomas. If that's on Elijah. Oh, lane violation. Lane violation. Excuse me. Angola. Kofer. The tip by Mann is not there. Scarrow rips it away. Terrence Mann is struggling in this game. Missed three consecutive field goals. Had a not free throws had an opportunity for a tip in there unable to convert man is just one out of nine one forty one to go in regulation Clemson with a four-point lead Scarra open, DeVoe is open in the corner, Mitchell hits the three! Anish, you cannot have defensive breakdowns like that at this point in the game. Great job executing by Clemson, recognizing that Scarra was wide open. You see the misdirection happen. Scar finds himself open, attacks the paint, head up. Defense is, is in rotation. And Shelton Mitchell locked and loaded, knocking down a timely three-point shot. A one-and-one one for Trent Forrest, a 69% free throw shooter after a foul on the floor on Gabe DeVoe. Another big rebound by Scarra. Four consecutive missed free throws from Florida State. And that's not the guy you want to foul if you're Florida State. Reed, one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC. Man picks up his fourth. Both teams in the double bonus. Just as I sing his praises at the free throw line, Reed misses the first. P.J. Savoy, a three-point specialist, checking in for Florida State with 109 left in regulation. And the Knolls down three possessions. Leonard Hamilton going to his offensive lineup. Terrence Mann, who has struggled, finds himself on the bench, putting an extra shooter on the floor. The Seminoles in danger territory, a minute to go, down eight points. Needing to get the ball going to the basket here in a hurry. Kofer, Kumaji tries to tip it in, he does. And a timeout with 53.2 seconds left. 69-63, Leonard Hamilton wants to talk strategy. Florida State, eight and eight in conference play. Looking for their 20th win of the season. Currently projected as a nine seed with four top 25 wins. You would think they're in good shape, but if you're the Seminoles, you're not at the point right now where if you collapse completely down the stretch, it may be a rude awakening on Selection Sunday. Well, you want to control your own destiny if you can. 
And the matter is, in my opinion, you can't be two games below 500 in league play and expect to get a bid. Florida State has to play their best basketball here in this final 53 seconds with a game to go before the ACC tournament. They cannot look ahead. They have to take it right now, one possession at a time. You see the pressure ready to be applied. Look for one quick trap. Only a two-possession game with a lot of time left to go in this contest. Scara fouled by Angola, and David Scara, only a 62% free throw shooter to the line. That's the guy you want to foul. Jay Walker into the game, a 39% three-point shooter. And for a Florida State team that has struggled of late from three, they need their snipers on the floor. Tonight they've been much better, 9 of 22 from deep. Clemson with a timeout. 50 seconds to go in regulation, 70 to 63. Take us inside both huddles right now. What are the coaches telling each team? Well, Brad Barnell is telling the Clemson Tigers, Defend without fouling. Show your hands. Florida State has gone to a smaller lineup, so the Tigers can switch everything to take away, not allowing a behind-the-screen three-point shot to be taken. If you're Florida State, everybody on the floor right now is an outside shooter. Bill Culper's the five-man surrounded by four guards. You want to attack early, try to get it to the rim. If the defense is in rotation, make the correct basketball play, but you do not need a three-point shot right now. You want to extend this game as long as you possibly can. Get the highest percentage shot you can right now in this offensive possession. Kofer tonight has five threes. He's got 21 points, a game high. Angola has rediscovered his three-point stroke. He's three of four from downtown. Forrest brings it up. Nearly turned it over. Angola off balance. Rebound to DeVoe. And finally fouled by Angola. Three on Angola. DeVoe to the free throw line as Clemson moves closer to that 11th ACC win. Right now for Clemson. It's about making free throws, defending without fouling, and then being strong with the basketball, expecting to be fouled, meet your passes. Don't worry about the score right now. You're ahead. That clock needs to continue to run. You do not want to help Florida State out by fouling them, stopping the clock, and allowing them to put points on the board. DeVoe gets them both. They call him Bobby Buckets for a reason. Forrest turns it over, Angola fouls Reed, and Clemson can sense it on the verge of winning their 11th ACC game. That would be a first in school history. You have to go back to giving a lot of credit to Coach Brad Barnell. He's a coach that preaches defense. The Tigers have been better defensively this season, but also have more offensive players Marquise Reed, a luxury to have a guard at the end of games that can step up and make plays. And the Tigers are doing this, as we said, without their best player. Dante Grantham without, went out with the ACL tear. The Tigers continue to find a way. Savoy launches. Reed the rebound. And Clemson... We'll get a couple of more free throws before all is said and done. Now for Florida State now, you look at that game this weekend at home against Boston College. Is that a must win for FSU? I don't think you want to leave anything to chance if you're Florida State right now. As I said, with the loss here, you drop to 8-9 and nine in league play. 
to lose at home in the final regular season game against a Boston College team which has played well down the stretch. You have to take care of your home court. You don't want to leave anything to chance. And here's the thing. If Notre Dame and Florida State finish with the same record, now Notre Dame has Virginia, so that may not happen. But if Notre Dame is able to beat Virginia and both finish at 9-9, nine and nine, Notre Dame gets the tie break, and Florida State will have to play on Tuesday, day one of the ACC tournament. Meanwhile, Clemson, without Dante Grantham, these last ten games have found ways. Brad Brownell has done one of the best coaching jobs in the ACC, and the Tigers, for the first time in school history, have won 11 games in an ACC season. Final score from Little John, Clemson 76. Florida State, 63.